Hi, welcome back to CS170. We're on week nine. Um, just want to go through a couple of things. We're going to be stepping into Excel uh, this week. Uh, just a basic introduction, uh, but if you actually look through this, it actually seems to cover a whole bunch of different things. So I'm going to break them up into small little video clips, and you can uh, take them in as, as you like, topic by topic. And, and really, a, a lot of these things, you know, it, it is Microsoft Excel, uh, which I'll show you in a second, where a lot of these things are basic uh, stuff that there's all kinds of videos, all kinds of reference all around the internet. Uh, so I'll show you <clears throat> from my perspective uh, each of these different topics, but you're welcome to look at the Microsoft site uh, as well as other references to, to get your insight, uh, get examples and practice on these things. Um, and I think probably one thing maybe I'll try to add to it that you might not get from these tutorials is how to uh, leverage some of these functions um, uh, on a practical basis. So using them, uh, making them so that they're easy to troubleshoot. Uh, you know, spreadsheets, uh, once you take the basic stuff and build them up uh, into fairly large and complex spreadsheets, uh, they get to be quite a challenge to maintain and troubleshoot uh, or change or, or whatnot. So I don't know in terms of videos and, and stuff that's out there how much you know those type of things are covered. So I'll try to add that little bit of flavor on top of like just teaching you the basic uh, functionality for each of the, the spreadsheet uh, functions. Okay, so uh, you'll see uh, if you look in the allow resources <clears throat> You may have already noticed or noticed this, right? But the way I've set up these PDFs uh, for each of the weeks is you see at the beginning it says like the week number all the way through, uh, and here here's our week. I just uploaded these, so uh, you can have access to all of these um, points before I cut all the video clips for them. Um, <clears throat> so this is week nine, and this is uh, the first uh, half of it. This is the second half of it. Um, and it covers all kinds of different functions uh, within Excel. So it's split up like that. And you'll see that for all these other weeks in case you haven't already noticed. So uh, it has the week and it has the chapter uh, that it refers to all the way down. So hopefully that's a, a nice way to uh, organize it. So you can look at that on your own time. Uh, so remember um, it's under files and then under allow resources here. Okay, you might have noticed that there's like loud lectures and actually it's kind of stuff from the, the prior semester uh, that I was teaching this class. Uh, you may look in there, um, <clears throat> they pretty much should line up uh, a lot, uh, <clears throat> but it's just organized a little bit differently because it was face-to-face -face classes back then. Um, but you could look at that too. Uh, Excel stuff, uh, a lot of it should probably be similar anyway. Okay, so that's up to you. Uh, but really for this semester, I've tried to line up everything within Lao uh, resources here. Okay. Now the other thing that a lot of people uh, had questions about um, is, <clears throat> you know, what are we using? There's all kinds of spreadsheets out there, obviously. Um, but really, a lot of these functions, when you get beyond the basic functions, you really need to use uh, Microsoft Excel. So some of the stuff you may be able to do on Google Sheets or, or some other spreadsheet, um, but when you get to the more advanced functions uh, around pivot tables and whatnot, um, you really, uh, the charting and, and, and the other types of like uh, wizards and, and functions that come with it, um, you really need to be on Microsoft Excel, okay? And not even really the online uh, version, uh, you really want to try to download to the local desktop version to have the full functionality uh, to really exercise everything uh, with Excel that you can get get access to. Basic stuff, yeah, you can do it with the online Excel, and you might even be able to do it with all the other types of spreadsheets. Uh, so if you look at Rutgers, it.rutgers.edu, Microsoft Office, you can see here, you can do the download. Uh, it's free for students. Um, and you just click on that and then you'll be able to get that download on your computer. And you look down here, 
um, <clears throat> this is just a sampling of videos, but you can see here like name cells and ranges and whatnot. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these videos out there. Uh, they're pretty well, uh, you know, labeled, explained, and whatnot. So if you want to look at these, you're welcome to look at these also. Okay, uh, so do be mindful. Try to uh, get to the Rutgers IT page, download um, Microsoft Office. Uh, that's really what you want to be working on for uh, this portion of the class, uh, which is covering Excel. Okay. All right, so where are we? All right, so we're in the basics of spreadsheets. Okay, so let me just kind of run through the topics part, which you'll see there's actually quite a bit of topics here. Um, <clears throat> don't uh, don't fret. Uh, won't, I'm not going to cover all of these in one shot. I'm going to try to cut these up into into little snippets if I can. Um, so yeah, you can see this. Uh, you know, you have these ideas, workbook, worksheets. Uh, this is an important concept: the idea of relative cell reference, absolute cell reference. Uh, there's like uh, naming uh, on ranges of cells, uh, various types of uh, arithmetic options, um, and then you also have these functions, right? And this is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of functions, a whole bunch of uh, uh, functions that are built in, uh, which are very helpful, right? Uh, it saves you the trouble of having to implement all of these functions on your own. Uh, some of them, it's not that hard to implement yourself, but it's good to just have these out of the box. Uh, and you know you have some of these which are advanced functions um, <clears throat> almost anyone who does anything with uh, Excel at some point is probably gonna get into things like VLOOKUPS um, we don't talk about it here but pivot tables um, these are formulas right here for calculation let's say you have a loan or something or you're looking at an investment um, these are logical uh, things that you've already seen in other things like when we did the search earlier this semester um, or when we were doing the conditionals uh, you're putting multiple conditional checks together um, you know you look at these ands and ors um, and then you have these statistical functions I'll be explaining what that means um, <clears throat> We have charts. There's some charts that come uh, pretty much built in, and then you can, uh, you know, customize and manipulate them and whatnot. Um, and you have these things like scenario analysis. Uh, there's some formatting stuff here. Uh, yeah, and like I mentioned before, pivot tables, okay, uh, and pivot charts are here, okay. All right. So, you know, why do we use Excel? Um, I, I don't have exact statistics, but I'm pretty sure, like in my experience, almost everyone has to touch Excel in one shape, form, or another. Uh, especially once you get into, uh, you know, looking over projects, doing some analysis on things, uh, namely around something around numbers, right? So you're doing some budget stuff and whatnot, but it could be any sort of data, really. Uh, and, you know, Excel itself handles a certain volume of data, but they have other types of products that pretty much use sort of an Excel-like interface uh, and just scale up to like essentially like big data, right? You have a whole bunch of data. Um, but bottom line is uh, Excel is something that once you come out into uh, the working world, um, it's all over the place, right? It's done all kinds of stuff you can build it, it's so flexible. There's so many things that both come with it and then other people have built on top of it. Um, and you can put together some really complex type of things. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's not so good, depending on how you put these things together. Similar to how you put code together, right? Some people can take code and make some very robust and maintainable code, easy to follow, easy to troubleshoot, um, and other people do not. And the same thing you can be saying for Excel, right? So sometimes people put together some really crazy complex Excel sheet that does all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but then if they leave or whatnot, they leave it to someone else. It's a nightmare to support it. 
Um, so, you know, I'll just kind of mention a couple of the things as we go along to, you know, help with those type of things, to help troubleshoot it or help make it maintainable, okay? Um, but these are the different reasons uh, you might do it. Um, these top here, probably, yeah, I probably do this quite often, right? Uh, you know, you get some numbers, uh, you slice and dice them, create some nice little pie charts or whatever chart you want off of it, um, do some scenarios off of it, do some filtering off of it, uh, pivots off of it. Uh, it's very common type of stuff. You know, in my own experience, it's usually around like, you know, budgets, um, maybe some analysis on, on some uh, data that we've gotten in. Um, yeah, there's project plans they put in here. If it's a basic project plan, yeah, I probably would do it. I don't know if I would put a complex project plan in, in Excel. Uh, they have more dedicated tooling to do uh, project plans. Uh, yeah, graphically display information. Like I said, there's a number of like wizards that come along that can present in all kinds of different 3D charts and uh, graphs and whatnot. Um, but I, I wrote this here. And what if scenarios? Um, yeah, so I can step that through later. Okay. Uh, yeah, so computing with spreadsheets, uh, yeah, you know, it, like, it's, like it says here, a lot of times people are just crunching numbers uh, with this, um, but there's other things you can do with it just from a pure data standpoint, so any type of data in there, um, just put it in there, uh, you can do a lot of stuff to do, let's say, reconciliations of data, uh, filtering things out, uh, enriching it, uh, doing whatever with it. Uh, there's, it's almost limitless what, what you can do with Excel uh, around data, right? There's all kinds of data you can throw in this and then you can slice and dice it. That's, I think that's really the bottom line with this. The most common thing, as I mentioned before, is really around budgets, okay? Uh, so <clears throat> I see we're at the 12 minute mark. So let me just, do some very quick thing here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna bring up the Excel spreadsheet. Let's see if I have one. Well, I actually have uh, one up already, so let's see. So this is my little videos uh, one here, but I don't wanna mess with that. So let me, uh, you know what, let me just create a new sheet, what the heck. Uh, all right, I'm gonna not mess with the Excel one. Okay, um, so you'll see I can open up this, right? So this is basically a whole new um, Excel instance, let's say. Uh, and you can see like there's these sheets down here. So I can create a whole bunch of sheets. If I go down here, and let's say it defaults to this, but let's say I want to use this to do intro function Excel. Right, and then I'm gonna go here, and maybe I'll create a second sheet. Uh, maybe this is like, you know, uh, details or something like that. Right, so you can see I can create a whole bunch of these uh, down here at the bottom, and it could be organized by whatever topic I want to talk about. And then I can do whatever I want up here. Right, it's a whole bunch of uh, things I can do off of this, which I'm not gonna go into for this lecture. I'm trying to keep this not too long. Um, <clears throat> so. Yeah, as it says here, it's simulating an accounting spreadsheet. So you have like two dimensions, um, and then you know each cell has text, numbers, or formulas, right? Uh, so let's say I have a budget or something, right? Uh, so let's say I have food. I have to get some food. Maybe I have to pay the rent. Um, Maybe I have to, uh, you know, pay for entertainment. Uh, what else do I do during the during the month here? And this would be, let's say, a month. Um, so let's say I start off in January, February, uh, March. Just keep it like that for now. Uh, food, rent, entertainment, what else do I do? Uh, 
transportation. Save some money sometime. I so I do some savings. Uh, what else do I do? Food, right. entertainment, transportation, savings. Uh, I guess I gotta pay some utilities, right? So I gotta pay uh, pay for my water and electric and stuff like that. Um, yeah, let's leave it at that. We don't need to get overly complex with this. Uh, and let's say for the month of January, I spend like 300 bucks on food, um, and rent is like, I don't know, uh, thousand bucks a month, entertainment, let's say that's another 300, transportation, uh, 200 and let's say I spend 500 in savings utility like 250 okay um, so yeah that's just some basic you know numbers here info here I'm not gonna get into any formatting you can see all kinds of stuff you can do here um, but you know maybe let me do let me do one thing here let's say for the sake of argument um, like everything went up by five percent uh, for some reason so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna reference the first month and then I'm gonna add um, 0 0.05 times that Okay, and so what that did was it took 5% and added to this. So my food budget for some reason went up uh, by 5%. Okay, and then what I can do is this. And all I've done, in case I do that slow, see this little dot here? I grabbed that and then I just dragged it down. So my left mouse button, I clicked on that and I grabbed that and put it down to here. And so the nice thing is it basically took this and copied it all the way down. But not only that, um, you can see, look, uh, actually I should explain what this is. So D5, that's this cell here, right? See so a D, and then you see this five here, right? So that's D5. So when I did this calculation, I did equals to D5 uh, plus 0.05 times D5. Right, so that's 5%, right? And then you just added the two together, right? Now, look at this, D6, right? I didn't do anything. Uh, you didn't see me type anything else. All I did was just copy this down, and you see magically, it knows that I want to increment this and this. Now, I don't always have to do that. Maybe I don't want to do that sometimes. And, and that's when we'll get into absolute and relative cell reference and stuff like that, which I'm not going to do in this video. Uh, this is just a quick introduction here. I created a new book, workbook, and then I created like these little sheets down here, these worksheets. I can keep on doing with this plus sign here. Created these entries here, right? These are, uh, you know, month, uh, my budget here. These are some numbers here. And then Excel is able to take that with some formula. And I'm able to copy and paste this formula, or in this case, dra drag it down or fill it down to here. Uh, and it's smart enough to adjust all the cell references accordingly. Okay. And so, you know, the nice thing about this is, let's say I messed up. Let's say actually the food was not $300 in January, it was $400. And magically, the cell uh, reference will update. Now it became $420. Right, that's what you get by having these type of formula references set up. Right, uh, that's one of the great things. Uh, in some cases, it's a really bad thing about Excel, but a lot of cases, it's a good thing, where you can punch in something and then magically all the other references to it will recalculate. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to go on and on. I think I'm already hitting the 20-minute mark. So let me stop here, and I'm going to come back to some more videos soon. Thank you.